So this was such beautiful symmetry that um, we shared um, anniversaries today. So when Tina asked me to share a piece of advice, I thought, what could be better than seven things that I've learned in seven years of writing and reading and, and living? So here we go. One, allow yourself the uncomfortable luxury of changing your mind. Um, as Jason said, this is a culture where our opinions are so quick and so hastily formed, and the most embarrassing thing is not to have an opinion. So we put them on and we strut around and we assert them and we feel so righteous about them when it's really, really hard to just say, I don't know. And yet it is so much more rewarding to understand than to feel right, even if that means changing your mind about a subject, an ideology, a person, and even yourself. Number two. Do nothing out of guilt. Do nothing for prestige or money or status or approval alone. That's it. Do what makes your heart sing. Number three, be generous. Be generous with your time, with your resources, with giving credit, but most of all with your words. It is so much easier to be a critic than a celebrator. And again, Jason mentioned, Funnily, this is something that I thought about yesterday, and, and Jason so beautifully nailed so much of it, but it, it really helps to remember that there is a human being behind every piece of art or writing or every book that you see and, and sort of feel tempted to comment on. And um, I think to understand and be understood, those are among the greatest gifts in life. And it helps to think of every interaction as an opportunity to, to exchange them. Number four, build pockets of stillness into your life. Meditate, run, go for a walk. Um, as one of my favorite Creative Morning speakers, Myra Kalman said, wonderful things happen when your brain is empty. Um, most importantly, sleep. Be as religious and disciplined about your sleep as you are about your work. And it's funny, we have this mentality that um, wearing how little sleep we get by on as a badge of, of sort of validating our work ethic, but really the only thing it bespeaks is a complete failure of self-respect and of priorities, because what could be more important than our mental health and our sanity, which is the foundation for absolutely everything else? Um, number five, Maya Angelou famously said, when people show you who they are, believe them. I like to rephrase that to when people try to show you who you are, do not believe them. You're the only custodian of your own integrity. And the assumptions that, the assumptions made by those who, who don't take the time to understand who you are and what makes you tick and what you stand for in the world, those reveal so much more about them and absolutely nothing about you. Um, number six, presence is far more intricate and rewarding an art than productivity. Ours is a culture where we're evaluated as human beings by our efficiency and our earnings and our ability to produce this or that against this or that timeline. Um, but as one of my favorite writers, Annie Dillard, said, how we spend our days is, of course, how we spend our lives. And lastly, number seven, expect anything worthwhile to take a long time. This phrase is actually borrowed from another Creative Morning speaker, my wonderful partner, Debbie Millman, but the sentiment behind it is something I absolutely believe. Um, this myth of the overnight success, it's just that, a myth. The flower doesn't go from bud to blossom in one sprightly burst, and yet, as a culture, we're so tragically disinterested in the tedium of the blossoming. But that's where all the magic happens. That is our becoming. That is the making of our character and of our destiny. And with that in mind, thank you, Tina, for five amazing years of creative fertilization for blossoming.